can, we can start then. So there are the, some similarities and uh, differences between uh, our individuals that are the representatives of Arctic and Antarctic fauna, penguins and little auks. Of course, we know that uh, penguins can't fly. They are flightless birds and the little auks can fly. But, and here should be the video. The video is online and I have already told uh, you about that video that is attached to the description of today's lesson. So I hope you will watch it afterwards. I rec strongly recommend it because it's great. So of course they can fly uh, and they are typical for the Arctic and very often they are called the penguins that learn how to fly. It's a very funny description because little auks are only in the northern hemisphere in the Arctic and the penguins in the Antarctic. The inform interesting information is that the oldest uh, penguins that were found by the archaeologists and the scientists is 25 million years old. Yes, and the oldest penguins were was as tall as a man, so they were very huge, and those that uh, we can observe today are far more uh, smaller than they um, the oldest uh, penguins that used to live on the earth many many years ago. There is a skeleton of the penguin, and it's uh, in, made in a funny way, of course. It's uh, rather the graphic for the Linux fan, but I will have a uh, first question for you. Do the penguins have knees? It's a very funny question because uh, many people type it in Google to search for the answer. And the answer is in the Google because Google knows everything. And how do you think? Do the penguins have knees? Uh, okay, I will wait for your answer. And the nest, the nest is a similarity and difference because all of the species made nests, but in a different ways. Uh, it's uh, only the information to which family belongs little ox. Yes, they have knees. Remember about that. <laughs> And the same is in Little Ox case. They all have knees like we have. And uh, the similarities is the interdigital webbing. Uh, if you will look through the dictionaries I prepared for you, it's a, uh, something special between the fingers of the, the animals to help them dive and swim. So look to the dictionary for that uh, word if you don't know it. And no apteria. Apteria, it's a special name of the naked bird skin that is not covered with feather. And nor, neither penguins nor little ox have apteria because they are swimming in the sea and diving. So the apteria may cause the hypothermia. Uh, as a result. So in that species, the bacteria is now observed. And the eggs. Penguins on average lay two eggs and the little ox only one because they are very small birds. But the penguins uh, usually two because today we will be discussing only about three species. Uh, those who are living on King George Island and they lay two eggs. But uh, for example, the emperor penguins can lay only one egg, like the little auk. Yes. Okay, so yeah, here you have the skeleton of the penguin. As you can see, it's without head, without the skull, because um, hmm, it was attacked probably by the Antarctic skua. You will see it later on, on the, the other photo. Uh, so it's like a dramatic photo that I want to uh, present you, but it, the important information is that the skeleton of penguin is far more heavier than it, the other birds. Why? Because uh, penguins, as I have already told you, 
can dive. So with the light skeleton, as those birds that can fly, it will be very difficult and even impossible. So the, the, remember that the skeleton is heavier, uh, the skeleton of the penguins, of course. And we have the little ox and Adelie penguins. Be careful because soon there will be another question for you. And uh, of course, little ox live in the Arctic on Spitsbergen, for example, and the Adelie penguins on, in the Antarctic on King George Island. I will tell you about the species living on those two islands because I spent there on Spitsbergen and King George Island about more than two years uh, working for, for the research, Polish research station in Spitsbergen and on King George Island. So some of you that had an opportunity to participate in my lesson about those two places have, I, I hope, a huge knowledge about the researchers and Polish research uh, that is doing in, in the Arctic and in the Antarctic. Okay, so uh, there will be a question for you about the coloration, because as you can see, they have the same white and black color. Why? Uh, the question was on my last lesson, so if some of you carefully heard what I was saying, I think you know the answer very well. Why little logs and the other penguins are black and white? because it's not an uh, unexpected coincidence. It's like an adaptation to the climate. How do you think? Yes, 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 we have the, in, the answer. They want to be invisible, right? That's a, very in, that's a very good answer because it's connected with the camouflage. Uh, the little hawk and the penguin um, that are that are seen from the above uh, is are dark on the dark surface, for example, on the sea or on the land, and the predator have, has a little problem to spot it. And the same is when the, for example, penguins or of course little hawks are on the sea because the predator beneath can see the white belly on the light surface. So. The, ch the chances for survive are getting higher when you have enough color, when you have special coloration that uh, helps you to be invisible for the predators. Colonies and nests. It's interesting that in the penguin's case, we have a different English word to call the penguin colony. It's called rockery, and you can find that word in the dictionary. And how about the nest? As you can see on the left side, penguins are building their nest using small, sto small stones. And how about the little ox? Where are the chicks? Because w you can see the two colonies uh, on those two photographs. On the left, the penguins. On the right, the little ox. There are many pairs of the animals living in the colonies. And where is the nest of the little ox? How do you think? Where is the nest? Where is the nest? On the, on the left side, the, the answer is very simple. It's on the land because we can see the small penguin and the, near the, 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 the second egg and with the parents sitting on the nest. Nest is made of small stones. And little ox have different strategy. Okay, we have the answer that the chicks are between the stones. Yes, right, because the colonies of the little ox are on the cliffs. So the little ox uh, don't waste their time to build nest. They only use the natural holes between the stones. So the chicks are inside. And um, please remember that name of the type of soil because it will be in the exercise 
uh, sheet uh, that I prepare for you. I hope you will do it afterwards. So when we have the colony of the birds living in the Arctic or in the Antarctic, we know that those regions have very poor climate and poor soil, weather and so on conditions. So when we have the colony, of course, the birds are producing a lot of guano that is a natural fertilizer of the soil. So the soils that are next to the colonies are called ornithogenic and they are more rich in many substances than the other types of the soils we can observe in the Arctic or in the Antarctic. Ugly duckling, it's my favorite slide because for me it was a big surprise that the cheek of the little oak is dark, it's black. That was a surprise, so we ha you have on the left little oak. On the right, uh, it's a small chinstrap penguin we will uh, discuss today three species of the penguins, as I have told you, uh, living on the King George Island. It's a uh, chinstrap penguin, Adelie penguin, and gentoo. Uh, Adelie penguin was on the first slide or in the very beginning of the presentation. Here you have the chinstrap, small chinstrap penguin, a uh, gentoo penguin on the left side, and on the right there is Adelie penguins. There are small Adelis, <laughs> and as you can see, they are very fat and dirty. So when some of you thought that penguins are a clean animals, like we can observe in uh, movies, you are not right, because those who are living in the colonies look like this. Yes, they are dirty, it, and it is not only because of the guano, and, uh, uh, but of the food that is brought by their parents to the colony. Okay, so we will discuss the plumage um, afterwards. Now I would like to show you a small short video about the penguins living on King George Island. So here we have the three species of penguins, the Adelie penguins, gentoo penguins, Okay, I hope that you can hear the sound, the noise from the rockery, the penguins colony, and it's very difficult to um, to be next to the colony because of the noise and because of the smell, of the guano smell, but um, you can use to it 
when you live with the penguins for one year round. So that's not a problem. So uh, we know that uh, they have different plumage. The adult penguins have two layers of uh, feathers that are thick together. So the layers of feather is, are waterproof and uh, have a very good insulation from cold. But the chicks um, have not thick, not as thick as uh, it should be. The, the layer of, of feathers because they are young and they are protected from by their parents from the predators. So, for example, they don't need to have the camouflage colors um, as a plumage. And how about fat? Because we know that the feathers are a good insulation from cold. And how about fat? Do penguins have a lot of fat or not? That would be an inspiration because the snails don't live in the Arctic or in the Antarctic, like spiders. Yes, I was very happy to spend over two years without spiders because I hate them. Sorry, but I'm very afraid of spiders. Do penguins have fat? Look at the right side, come on. That's not a that's not a, a difficult question. Okay, thank you for the answer. Of course, yes, <laughs> they are fed, and it's also a kind of an adaptation to the strong climate conditions, uh, because the feathers plus the layer of thick fat helps them to survive in cold climate, in cold water especially, because as you know, the penguins can swim and can dive. And mostly they are living on the sea, using the sea ice as well. And on the land, they are going only for breeding season. Yes, 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 that's right. Peng penguins have or should have a layer of fat. So that's why they are eating all the time to, to be fat enough for the winter. And uh, when we have the colony, there are special social, we can say, roles in that colony of, for example, the penguins. On the first plan, we have the parent, probably. I say probably because you will see afterwards what will be next. And we have school. school. Maybe some of you who was watching the video observed the groups of small penguins that are standing together, very close to each other. It's a way of uh, keep the warm and not to be cold. Because when the chicks are big enough and they need more food, two parents go to the sea to hunt for fishes or for krill. So that's why the small chicks are left alone and they spend the time together um, close to each other to keep the warm. And of course they are not alone because they are living in the colony and there is another role, very important one, of the adult penguins and it is called of course and officially aunts and uncles. Those penguins uh, are for example uh, parents that lost their chicks because they were killed by the predators or the young penguins that don't have chicks. So they take care of the youngsters uh, waiting for their parents to come back from the sea. And on the uh, upper side of the photo, you can, oh, I'm sorry, you see the juvenile individual, it's a uh, fledgling uh, it's uh, some, a form between the chick and the adult penguin. You can see that uh, the uh, one layer of feather is uh, disappearing because the, the penguin is changing their feather to become an adult with a black and white coloration.
and we have here the little ox and uh, that hand on the left side belong to the ornithologist so everything is okay that was not my hand <laughs> i'm not a specialist to work with the birds but uh, that was a person who knows very know very well how to keep safely in the hand the the bird so yes everything is okay but uh, please note that there is a ring on the bird's leg and it is used by the scientists to observe the birds like little hawks and the penguins because that's why we know where they are migrate or how old they are or but it's not too it's not too easy to estimate how old is the the oldest penguin or the oldest little hawk i asked my colleagues and they told me that in horsund on spitzbergen the the oldest little hawk observed by them was 16 16 years old so it's probably they live up to 20 years the penguins the same and um, another question is uh, that uh, comes connected with the, the little logs what uh, have discovered the scientists from the University of Gdańsk those scientists work every year in Horsund on Spitsbergen and the latest findings of their research they it was published i don't know maybe a few months ago that the birds that are stressed eat more it means that the adult little hawks are stressed they first eat uh, or hunt for eat for themselves not for the chicks and it is uh, important that uh, maybe um, or it is a kind of a hypothesis now because the scientists are working on it that uh, it might be a kind of an adaptation to the climate because when we have the stronger condition uh, weather conditions than usual the adults get stressed and eat more but only they hunt for food for themselves and the chicks are fed rarely than usual uh, so it means that um, maybe the adults decided that they have bigger chances to survive than the chicks because in the next year they can have another chicks and those who are in that, the breeding season maybe um, have low chances to survive. It's like the natural instinct or something like this. But the findings are very important and very useful for the next um, scientific works uh, on the bird, co bird colonies. And we have the photo from the Artstowski station from King George Island and there is a camera trap in the center of the penguins colony because the scientists uh, that are working at Artstowski station uh, are counting the penguins. It's a uh, long story short <laughs> because of the fact that Poland has the station that is working all year round in the Antarctic and we signed the Antarctic Treaty, the main document uh, that is uh, regulating the status of the Antarctic. So that's why we have to cooperate with the Commission for, um, for the Marine Living Resources of the Antarctic and they need, for example, the information how many penguins are in the colonies. Because the penguins eat mostly krill and the people are hunting for krill or com on commercial purposes. So that's why uh, they have to, the commission have to estimate the balance between the needs of the penguins and the needs of the people. Of course, the penguins are on the first place, so people are not allowed to hunt for much krill than it is uh, that is it, that it is estimated for the for 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 one year okay so uh, here is uh, only a short information about the the scientific works that are carried out 
in the north and in the south by Polish scientists. But of course, there are a lot of researchers. But um, I would like you only to remember those two as uh, the most typical. Okay. <laughs> there is a chicken on a purpose because very often I was asked a question about eating penguins. I know that it's very very unfair because um, the penguins are the animal that should be loved, not to be hunted. So uh, when we were at Arstowski Station, the students that participated in my lesson, a lessons uh, asked me very often that question. Do you ever eat a penguin? No, I don't. And I won't do it. Because for ex if at first, it's I, it's forbidden because the species are protected. That's, that is the first question. That's the first answer. And the second one is, of course, um, it's, it's unfair to eat penguins. It's, yeah, it, it can't be. So, but the interesting fact is I, there is a lot of literature written by the polar explorers from the beginning of the 20th century. And I found a Roland, Roald Amundsen diary. The Amundsen uh, was the participant of the first Antarctic expedition on Belgica ship. That was in the very ending of the 18th century. And he wrote the diary. The diary uh, was very boring because all the time he wrote about the weather, about the food, and so on. But among the others, there was an information about eating penguins because they overwinter uh, in the Antarctic. They haven't, they hadn't enough fresh meat, fresh food, so they decided to hunt for penguins. So uh, the Amundsen wrote, for example, that the taste of the penguin's meat is similar to the duck meat, but it's very important to take off the fat before, um, before preparing into it, because the fat spoil, uh, spoiled the, the taste of the meat. Yes, interesting. And the little ox are connected with a dish typical for Inuit people. Do you know what kivyak is? Okay, and um, we are, oh yes. Okay, you don't know. Maybe the others do. I will wait for the answer. And meanwhile, I will show you the short video with the little ox. Okay, as you can hear, I hope that the the noise in the little ox colony is the same as in the penguins colony. They are very noisy birds. And if some of you have a low video and have a technical problems to uh, see it in a full version, the link to that material, video material, is as well attached to the description of my lesson. So everything is one place, don't worry. And how about the kivyak? Some of you don't know, and maybe the rest will know what kivyak is. Um, it's a typical dish, um, for example, in Greenland for Inuit people. They are hunting for the ox um, during the summer season. And after that, all those birds are put in one bag 
and hidden under the stones, not to be eaten from the other predator like polar foxes. And they have to be stored for about a few months under those stones in low temperatures. And in that time, the meat is uh, being fermented or something like this. Um, and, it, and it has a very special taste. For example, for European people, I believe that will be a little bit odd. But you see, in Polish cuisine, we have the cucumbers, the f fermented cucumbers or uh, cabbage. So I think that for Germans, for example, that cabbage and those cucumbers are odd too. So it depends on the culture. So I think that in every national cuisine, it's something strange. <laughs> for the others. So, but the kiviak has a very important role in the cuisine. Maybe not nowadays, because um, the Inuit people live now in the civilization. It's very different than it used to be many years ago. But the diet of the Inuit people were very poor in many, um, many ingredients. And that's why they ate kiviak to have more vitamins, because it's uh, very rich in vitamins. Even if it tastes like a gorgonzola cheese or something. I only read about it. I didn't um, have an opportunity to taste it, but yeah, I will do it because I'm curious <laughs> what the taste is. Yes, uh, yeah, we are approaching the end of our presentation, but the predators of the little ox and the polar, uh, not polar bears, but the penguins, uh, are visible on that slide. On the left side, there is a glaucous gull in the Anta in the Arctic. I can show you. I, I, I'm showing you the the eye of the gull because yes, it's a big bird. It weighs about three kilograms, so it's quite huge and very dangerous for little hawks. And on the right, we have the Antarctic skua. Antarctic skua is hunting for penguins in the oh my god sorry in the Antarctic, and on the right you have very funny <laughs> funny photos with the Antarctic skua that is waiting for the sausage because at Artstovsky station and on Spitsbergen as well very often we did a grill and um, eat a lot of meat because uh, mostly the there are more men than women, than women at those stations. So that's why meat was in the first place in our diet. Oh, that, was, uh, that was tough. Yeah, but yeah, I survived somehow. But the squaw was waiting for the sausage. And she was so patient that she can wait for five uh, hours and, uh, and keep uh, and took uh, one of the sausage. So, of course, it's, uh, we are not allowed to feed the Antarctic squaws. So, yeah, he, he was, it was smart enough to catch, catch the sausage by itself. But the um, advantage of that action is that maybe that day one small penguin survived just because of the fact that the squaw was not hungry. Because the Antarctic squaw is hunting for penguins. Fortunately, and the feeding process in both species are very similar. It's like hmm, transporting transporting the food from parents to the young beaks, yes, to the mouth, to the chicks' mouth, <laughs> uh, to to say it in a simple way. But the process is called. Uh, there are, there are some differences, small differences uh, in that process because in pen, among penguins, the process is called regurgitation and it means that the food comes directly from the stomach and is transported to the beak of the chicks. And in a little ox case, it's some, a little bit different. Uh, okay, I know that it's a chicken and the chicken doesn't live in the Arctic and Antarctic, but I would like to focus on only one part of the chi uh, chicken body. It's cal called crop because it is observed in many, in many birds, 
uh, bodies and it is a part of the gullet of the digestive tract when the where the food is stored and after that transport to the mouth of the chicks so it's not like that it comes directly from stomach like among penguins but from the um, part in the middle of the gullet that is called crop uh, that words you will also find in your dictionary so don't worry but it's only for your interest feathers uh, yes we will uh, very quick tell, uh, discuss it because uh, we know that there are no apterias uh, among penguins and among little oaks and interesting fact is that the last both species are changing feathers in a penguins case it's more spectacular because in the end of the summer season they were standing still on the shore uh, they don't move they don't eat anything and they don't go to the sea because they can't without the waterproof layer of new feathers it's impossible and the animals might die of hypothermia so for 20 days they have been waiting for the new feathers that come and only after that they can go to the sea and the confusion effect and it is the on the last information yes because we are run out of time and it is a kind of adaptation used uh, by many animals and of course by the penguins and the little oaks as well because when we have in one place many individuals like the group of the little oaks in the air or the group of penguins or the iceberg um, the predator is a little bit confused which one it should pick up so uh, it's a few seconds when the group of penguin group of penguins jump into the water or the group of little oaks fly into the air the few seconds when the predator is a little bit confused and is not attacking they have a few seconds that help uh, escape uh, or survive uh, in that in in that um, in, in, in that situation so confusion effect of course there is uh, also an information about in the dictionary and in exercise so please remember that fact okay yes this is the end of the presentation the another information about the yes, introduced species and the native species which is the Adelie penguin typical for King George Island but not only for King George Island, but the whole Antarctic, because it's a very common penguin species. Uh, introduced species means that there are no native citizens, I mean humans, on the Antarctic. All of those who are here now uh, just um, work there uh, on one year or shorter contracts. They are scientists, technical workers, administrative workers, and so on. So the native species is in on that photo, Adelie penguin. Okay, uh, we have uh, a few minutes. If you will have any questions concerning our topic, I will try to answer it. Mm -hmm.